Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chan. I'm Nimikong. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 1, Section 1 of the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Ass. Ah. Oh. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Arthur Conan Doyle. Chapter 1, Section 1. Eh. To Sherlock Holmes, she is always the woman. I have seldom heard him mention her under any other name. In his eyes she eclipses and predominates the whole of her sex. It was not that he felt any emotion akin to La Ferrari Nudler. All emotions, and that one particularly, were abhorrent to his cold, precise but admirably balanced mind. He was, I take it, the most perfect reasoning and observing machine that the world has seen. But as a lover he would have placed himself in a first position. He never spoke of the softer passions, save the jive and the sneer. Actions. His mental results. Pretty in a sensitive instrument. Or a crack in one of his own eyepar lenses. Would not be more disturbing than a strong emotion in a nature such as his. And yet there was but one woman to him. And that woman was the late Irene Adler. Of dubious and questionable memory. I had seen little of Holmes lately. My marriage had drifted us away from each other. My own complete happiness. Of his own establishment. Was sufficient to absorb all my attention. While Holmes. Who loathed every form of society with his whole bohemian soul. Remained in our lodgings in Baker Street. Buried among his old books. And alternating from week to week between cocaine and ambition. The drowsiness of the drug. And the fierce energy of his own key nature. He was still. As ever. Deeply attracted by the study of crime and occupied his immense faculties and extraordinary powers of observation in following out those clues and clearing up those mysteries which had been abandoned as hopeless by the official police. From time to time I heard some vague account of his doings, of his summons told us in the case of the trap of murder, of his clearing up of the singular tragedy of the Atkinson brothers at Trincomalee, reigning family of Holland. On these signs of his activity. However, which I merely shared with all the readers of the daily press, I knew little of my former friend and companion. One night it was on the 20th of March, civil practice, when my way led me through Baker Street. As I passed the wall remembered door, which must always be associated in my mind with my wing. With the dark incidents of the study in Scarlet, I was seized with a keen desire to see Holmes again, and to know how he was employing his extraordinary powers. His rooms were brilliantly lit, and even as I looked up, I saw his tall, spare figure pass twice in a dark silhouette against the blind. He was pacing the room swiftly with his head sunk upon his chest and his hands clasped behind him. To mate, who knew his every mood and habit, his attitude and manner told their own story. He was at work again. It's a new problem, in part my own. His manner was not effusive. It seldom was. But he was glad, I think, to see me, with hardly a word spoken, but with a kindly eye. 
He waved me to an armchair. Threw across his case of cigars. And indicated a spare case and a gas engine in the corner. Then he stood before the fire and looked me over in his singular and respective fashion. What luck suits you, he remarked. I think... What then? Seven, I answered. Indeed. I should have thought a little more. Just a trifle more. I fancy. Watson. And in practice again. I observe. Then. I see it. I deduce it. How do I know that you have been getting yourself very wet lately? My dear home, said I. This is too much. You would certainly have been burned. Had you lived a few centuries ago. A dreadful mess. But as I have changed my clothes, I can't imagine how you deduce it. As to Mary Jane. She is incorrigible. And my wife has given her notice. But there. Ian. He took all to himself and rode his long. Nervous hands together. It is simplicity itself, said he. My eyes tell me that on the inside of your left shoe. Just where the firelight strikes it. The leather is scored by six almost parallel cups. Of the sole in order to remove crusted from it. And you see, my double deduction that I had been out in vile weather, and that you had a particularly malignant boot sitting specimen of the London slavey. As to your practice, if a gentleman walks into my room smelling of ardifrom, the black mark of my treat is silver upon his right forefinger. Secreted his stethoscope. I must be dull. Indeed. Deduction. When I hear you give your reasons, I remarked. Do it myself. Process. Quite so, he answered. Lighting a cigarette. And throwing himself down into an armchair. You see what you do not observe. The distinction is clear. For example, well, how many? Quite so. You have not observed. And yet you have seen. That is just my point. Then, I know that there are 17 steps because I have both seen and observed. By the way, since you are interested in these little problems, and since you are good enough to chronicle one or two of my trifling experiences, you may be interested in this. He threw over a sheet of thick, pink-tinted note paper which had been lying open upon the table. It came by the last post, said he. The note was undated, and without either signature or address. They will call upon you tonight. At a quarter to eight o'clock, it said. A gentleman who desires to consult you upon a matter of the very deepest moment can hardly be exaggerated. This account of you we have from all quarters received. Be in your chamber then at that hour. This is indeed a mystery, I remarked. I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to theories before one has data. To be continued.